Hey, what's up guys, it's Anish here today, and we are back with another video on Sonic Frontiers. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but we have an interview with Brian Shea, a person from Game Inform who's played Sonic Frontiers, and it's from Fidel. Out of all people, Fidel. Wow. What, what, what a guy. Wow, 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 how? How, how was he done this? How? But, um, yeah, from Fidel's interview with Brian Shea, we got a lot of interesting details about Sonic Frontiers, some of which we have actually heard before, so we're going to be looking at it all in today's video. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's take a look at the news at hand. On to Twitter, we Sonic Rush. Right, so we return to SSF 1991, where it's basically summarised Fidel's interview. I don't think we knew this before. The areas of the map you can't access at first are fogged over. We know it's not all immediately accessible, but now we know how the game indicates what's accessible or not. Now, we did actually hear this fogged over part in a leak, like, I think it was like two years ago or something, so that leak is probably more credible now. Woohoo. You get ranks in the cyberspace levels. All right, good, good, good. There is a ranking system. I'm glad that is here because I can't play a modern Sonic level without a ranking system. It just makes the levels way more replayable because you have something to actually work for. It makes 100% in these games a lot more fun too, in my opinion, but that's just me. Now, obviously, I'm hoping that this ranking system is a lot better than Generations and Forces. Because Generations was absolutely just disgusting. And then Forces obviously had the daily mission bonuses and everything like that. So hopefully it's on the scale of Unleashed, Colors, SA2 especially, especially SA2, Heroes and all that. So yeah. About Amy. She seems to remember that this is Sonic helping me and I just want to help the core cause. Her ability to communicate with you apparently gets stronger as you finish her missions. Some speculation is that Sage seems helpful but may have some self-interest of her own. He's speculating though because Sage comes off as a little stoic. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Sage becomes a villain or something in the game. I mean, is this a random AI voice that's talking to Sonic? I mean, that just screams evil to me. About the dialogue, it was kind of limited due to the build being even earlier than the one IGM played, as well it being mostly in cutscenes. But Roger Craig Smith is mentioned as doing a great job based on what dialogue he did hear. Sonic is alone for most of the game, but he does talk to himself every now and then. I mean, yeah, this all makes sense. Sonic is lost, basically, has no idea where he is. He's got amnesia too, I have to remember that. So he's always spouting out jokes every five seconds like he usually does in colours or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to hear Roger as Sonic. I, want, I just want to hear how much he's improved. Has he gone up from forces and TSR? Who knows? Cyberspace seemed to be the driving force of triggering a lot of cutscenes. Yeah, that makes sense, honestly, because Cyberspace is just going through Sonic's memories, so maybe going through these Cyberspace stages gets some of Sonic's memories back and then that triggers a cutscene or something. I don't know. Amy's memory tokens, hearts, are marked on your map. Coco's, you need to find first, are not. Alright, so that's good then, so you won't just be aimlessly just walking around with no sense of direction for the hearts at least then. Obviously for the Coco's, it's going to be a bit more searching for that, and obviously that makes sense because they actually used to actually level up, so if you can just find them in your map, that's going to be a bit too easy to level up and everything like that, so there's some sort of challenge here, which is good. The place you fish with Big, you have to find Big in cyberspace first, but once you do, Big and his fishing place will also be marked on the map. He thinks the purple coins you collect are for Big. Elder Cocos that will help up with Sonic are marked on the map too. Yeah, I think we know that the purple coins for Big because they have some sort of fishing hook logo on them, so who else is going to be fishing? That's right, Big. You do not fish as Big, you fish as Sonic. He also speculates that these voice diaries that you can buy from Big Shop are Big documenting his journey. That would be pretty interesting to hear actually. Maybe get some more story elements from just from Big the car of all people. Who knows? Sonic controls, very good. He feels the right way and connected to the ground. He's fast but not boost era fast. You'll get to your destination fast though. The only tweak in things was needed was precise platforming with double jumping is sometimes a little finicky. You know, see, every time double jumping has appeared in a Sonic game, it's never been perfect. I mean, you have the Werehog, Colors, Lost Worlds, Forces. We never really had a solid double jump, so this doesn't really surprise me all that much, but oh, well, it's not the biggest deal breaker in the world. There may be Green Hill in cyberspace, but there's no remixes of Green Hill's music. It was a completely new song. Alright, so basically it's going to be like Forces then, where we have these old places that have returned from previous games, but we're going to have original music, so th honestly that's pretty great, honestly. I'd rather have original music than another remix we've heard of Green Hill for the 10,000th time. 
There were two levels themed after Green Hill, and one of those chemical plant. Yeah, we already know this already. I think the first Green Hill level is a tutorial level, and then the second Green Hill level is actually part of the main cyberspace stages, so yeah. He says he thinks he kind of used a metropolis wording rather loosely, and doesn't think it's a metropolis from past games. He also thinks that the city level we saw in the direct is the one he calls Metropolis. Alright, so Metropolis is gonna be from Forces, Sonic 2, or Sonic Heroes. It's just the one that we saw in the trailer. So this does kind of mean that we could get some original level themes then because I haven't seen any Metropolis stage that's actually looking like the one in Frontiers at all. So maybe some new original levels of the cyberspace? Who knows? The tutorial cyberspace level is very short. He even remembers beating it in 52 seconds. He says he played only five or six, but he did mention that things they were getting longer. He had nothing unexpected here, honestly. I mean, the first tutorial cyberspace level is gonna be like up until Sacred 1 in the Sonic Unleashed, honestly. About 40 seconds or whatever. And then the levels get longer as you progress through the game too. Makes sense. He mentions that they're not really easy either. He mentions one level, at the chemical plant or the city one, that took him a few tries. And yes, there's branching paths in at least a couple of them. Alright, so they're not easy, but then again, he could just be not fantastic at 3D Sonic games. And also, it was his first time going through the level, so it's going to be hard at the first try. But hey, at least you have some multiple pathways, that's good, right? Not just a straight line like forces. At least you have some variation in pathways, that's good. Enemies that were in the original version of the levels are carried over to the cyberspace levels. Yeah, this does make sense as to why we saw the motor bug in the direct trailer, because obviously, according to this, enemies that were in the original stages are going to be in the Frontiers version of the stages too. So, say we have like a rooftop run and we know that's confirmed, Probably gonna have some egg fighters in there, maybe the arrow chasers from Unleash 2. You know, just the uh, bandics from Unleash basically. Then maybe if you have an 06 level, we'll have some 06 bandics in there. Yo, that, yo, that would be pretty sick actually. 06 enemies coming back, yo. Yo, oh, okay, that'd be, that'd be pretty sick actually, not even gonna lie. Well, I mean, unless they bring Crisis City back and nothing else, and that's gonna be kind of sad, but oh well. The Chaos Summon Vaults are scarred around the island. For example, you can find one on a hill. Hey, yeah, this is basically what you need the vault keys for. And I don't think SSF actually mentioned this, but from Big Shop, I think what um, Brian Shea said is that you can actually get vault keys from Big. So that's probably where you can get the vault keys without going to cyberspace like Kishimoto said. So yeah, that is interesting. He feels that like there's good momentum as he starts running and stops running. Now, I did watch Fidel's interview with Brian Shea, and to be honest with you, from the way Brian was kind of describing the momentum, it didn't sound like the momentum that we're all thinking of, honestly, so don't get too excited over that, just remain calm. But I could be wrong, I could be wrong. He says he didn't see more than 7 cyberspace levels on the island map. However, he was able to play 5 to 6, and he didn't even open up all the island's map. He only played on the northwest part of it. He says he wouldn't be surprised if there was around 10 on each island. Now, quick side note here. I don't know if it's just me being deaf or something like that, but when I watched the interview, Brian said that he went everywhere on the map except for the northwest part of it, not that he only played in the northwest part of it, so I don't know if this is actually a mistake that SSF has made or if it's me, but I'm more likely going to what SSF said because a lot of the people said that too, so I don't know. But anyways, into the most important discussion here, so he wouldn't be surprised if there was 10 cyberspace levels on each island, and when I watched the interview, he didn't just say 10, he said 10 to 20, so we could be potentially getting at least 40 cyberspace levels in the game. And just imagine if there was no repeats of areas too. We had 40 different areas. Oh my god, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Seeing 40 of Sonic's past levels return in Frontiers. That would be, that would be sick, honestly. Now, there is a chance that they could just reuse level themes over and over again. I mean, there's already two Green Hill stages in the game, so... They could just do that throughout the entire game, just keep reusing level themes, which I hope they don't do, please. I want to see a lot of Ares in this game, but still, 40 Cyberspace levels at a minimum. Oh my god, I'm just excited for Cyberspace, man. I, I want to hear some more information on it, man. I just want to see more of it, too. Wow. Alright, final piece of info here is going to be from Sonic Frontiers account, because he mentioned some stuff here that SSF didn't mention, so here we have here. The game starts with a CGI cutscene of Eggman trying to take control of the islands, but failing and end up sucked into cyberspace. There is five missions for each cyberspace levels, like getting S rank, collecting all red rings, collecting enough rings. Yeah, we already know about all these goals, but unfortunately, Brian didn't mention those time trial ones, they have to beat the level in a certain time. I was really hoping he actually mentioned that so we could get an insight to how long these levels would be, but oh well. He didn't play Sky Sanctuary level, he didn't fight the Titan or finish the first island during the demo, he finds the game cycle very fun and solid, and he thinks the Cyberspace levels are one of the highlights of the game. He played 5-6, to six, but 
I don't play Sky Sanctuary yet, so... We know there's two green hills. We have Chemical Plant. We have Metropolis. Then we have Rooftop Run. And Sky Sanctuary, so... He, if he's played 5 to 6, most likely going to be 6 or something, I don't know. And he hasn't played Sky Sanctuary yet. That means there's still one more level on the first island, at least, that we don't know about yet. Anyways, that brings it for today's video. So we got a whole bunch of information from Fidel. That's right, Fidel. I'm still just confused over that. How? Fidel is an absolute legend, man, I swear. But yes, we have an opening CGI cutscene for the game, a ranking system, at least, possibly, 40 Cypress levels in the entire game, and that is possibly a minimum. There are no remixes in the game, so it's all original music. And finally, the possibility of momentum. Momentum could be in Sonic Frontiers. But, what do you guys think of all this news? Does it make you more excited for Cyberspace? And just Frontiers in general? Let me know down below. Love to see what you guys have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially that last one. Don't forget to become unleashed by hitting that join button down below. And remember, it's not necessary. And I will see you all next time. Peace!